Hello there, Geek Walker. Back for another walkcast. Walking through what my daughter calls the Witch's Forest, which is a small park with some creepy trees in between our place where we walk from and her school. Some creepy trees. It's not that creepy, I suppose. Today I wanted to talk about me. Or more specifically, my past. If you've read my blog at all at the Geek Academy, CarlSinclairAuthor.com, I've spent some time <clears throat> detailing on blog posts a little bit of my geek history and various stories that have happened through my past. And in the first episode of the Geek Walker podcast, I said I would probably share some of those on here. I'm going to do that today. I'm going to take you back to many years ago in a little country called the United Kingdom where I was living at the time. I was at university and it was just after some pretty big geeky movies had come out. Uh, Return of the King had just been released on DVD, the third movie in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And Spider-Man 1 I believe two. Well, I'm pretty sure it was two. Had already come out too. So we're talking about 2003 from memory. But hazy, this specific event. Anyway, to take you back, I'm on my way to university or college for my American esteemed listeners. And I get a phone call on my Nokia 8310 interrupting my important game of snake and ruining my potential high score. It's my friend Elbows. He's called Elbows. If you've read my blog, I had an old friend in England who I accidentally, indirectly, caused him to cause major damage, breaking his elbow twice during such events. So I will call him Elbows for the purpose of this story. So Elbows calls me and he says, dude, and I respond, of course, with dude, what's up? He says, what's up, the PlayStation whack? I'm like, sup, the PlayStation whack, dude. This goes on for a while, as per usual. And he's like, come to my house. Let's watch some movies and get drunk. I'm like, dude, I've got college. He's like, dude, so do I, but I'm not going. I'm going to watch movies and get drunk. So I ponder the moment and I think about my future and my studies and the importance of attending such lectures as binary code and a number of other important subjects in software engineering when I finally realised that all you really need to do to pass that degree is play a shitload of video games, learn to hack a little bit and plagiarise the students from the year before. So I jump on the train about seven or eight. I'm not gonna rap, don't worry. So I jump on the train and I'm on my way up to a little city called Norwich, which is famous for not much really, a castle, some canaries, and a bunch of chavs, maybe some tractors. So anyway, we're heading up <coughs> and he meets me. He says, dude, should we get some crap bags? I'm like, dude, we totally should. Crap bags, if you don't know. Uh, when you walk into a market, a supermarket, a small store, a deli, whatever you want to call them, a dairy, if you're from New Zealand, and you randomly, as quickly as possible, go around and pick just random items of crap junk food, throw them into a bag, take them up to be scanned, and pay for them doesn't matter what it is, you don't have time to think about it, you just have to literally buy the crap bag and then live with your choices. So anyway, we've got the crap bag and we head to his house. We stop at the off license, we each pick up four cans of John Smith's, which is a bitter uh, type of beer, famous in the north of England. My 
friend Darren I can tell you more about that Darren Wearmouth just tweet at him he'll explain the differences between lagers, beers, ales uh, etc if you're unsure of what they are so anyway we get these we head into his house around the corner we tuck into the crap bags and we throw in Spider-Man 2 by the end of Spider-Man 2 the crap bags are gone so are the four cans of Johnny's John Smith's and we're still hungry and we're a little bit pissed I won't lie to you and he says to me shall we make something to eat? I'm like dude what will we make? and he's like well neither of us are particularly good at cooking and this was slightly before I started chefing and it may be a direct result of this that I decided to learn to cook properly he pulled out some frozen burger patties a bag of pasta some mayonnaise and that's it and that day the epic meal known as burger pasta was created we cooked up the burger patties and a, bu and a bunch of duck fat till they were nice and greasy we boiled a bag of pasta pasta, pasta, whatever you want to call it we cut up the burgers, put some salt and pepper in to the drained pasta and hit it with a shitload of mayonnaise and then we stirred it up and in our half drunken state probably full drunken state we scoffed down a shitload of burger pasta and it was good the duck fat giving us a nice layer in our throats of fat, fatty residue to get us ready for further drinking but then we realised that we'd spent all of our money on John Smith's and of course on the crap bags so we decide to raid Mr. Elbows, his father's line rack. Now we decide not to take the new ones because he's probably going to notice. So we specifically aim for the older, dustier bottles to the right, kept separate. Because he's never going to know because they're so old. He's not even going to remember that he has them. So we get into the first one, a bottle of red, something called a Shiraz, and we knock it down. Lord of the Rings is on. <coughs> By this point, Return of the King. In walks his sister, Little Elbows. And I forget that she's actually quite good looking at this point. I had forgotten anyway. She joins us and tells us that we're going to get in trouble with Mr. Elbows for drinking his fancy, fancy wine. And we said, no, he will never notice. It's an old bottle. Don't worry about it. Do you want some? She said, of course I do. Sits down and we start watching Lord of the Rings Return of the King again. We're there onto our third bottle of the old wine. We're all very drunk and sleepy. Our belly's full of burger pasta. And... Sorry, I'm just looking out for dangerous wildlife as usual sort of warning going off, probably a fire NATO attack coming, who knows. So anyway, we're a bit tired, we're getting to the end of the movie, we're up the pass of Kivathungal above Minas Morgul, Gollum, Sam and Frodo on the stairs. Gollum makes a play to get rid of Sam once and for all. When Frodo and Sam are asleep, he takes the Elvish Waybread breaks up a part of it, puts it onto Sam's jacket and throws the rest over the pass and then in the morning makes out that Samwise, being a fat hobbit, has actually eaten it and has Frodo all alone with the ring with him and Sam is banished. This is the last thing I see before I fall asleep. I wake up an unknown time later with Mr. Elbows shouting. In my half-drunken, half-hungover state, I sit up. I've had one arm draped over elbows and one over little elbows. And I realise, with the mess around us, the bottles of wine 
Mr. Elbows is fairly certain that I've just had a threesome with his two children, and it is kind of disturbing for him, I imagine. He's shouting at us, what is about this mess? What's going on? What's, who's been into my wine? What's, what's going on? Mrs. Elbows is in the background, furious that we've touched her special wine. We said, but it's so old and dusty, we didn't think you would notice. Apparently that was the point. It was old and dusty and that made it special. So this argument's going back and forth and why do you hang out with this guy and he's always a bad influence on you and he keeps breaking your elbow. Assumingly, directed at me. As if I'm the problem here. He's the one overreacting. So we... keep looking back and they're getting shouted at and I don't know what to do. How do I get out of this? Who do I blame? And then, it rem then I think back to the movie, the last thing I see. I crawl over in my drunken state like a little lecture, just like Gollum. I pick up a wine cork, hastily discard it onto the ground. I break it up into little pieces and put it onto Mrs. Elbow's jacket sleeve. And then I jump up and jump around in circles and I say, she did it. She took the winesies. He says, what the fuck are you doing? I said, she did it. Look, corks on her jacket sees. She took the wine. At which point, he threw the three of us out and told us not to come back, especially me, for an extended period of time. The three of us were standing outside in the driveway. Blythe, aka Elbows, turns to me and says, Dude, that was sweet. And then we all laugh and lived happily ever after. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story of Burger Pasta and Gollum. It was one such experience for my younger days, which I like to call young, drunk and stupid. Uh, and it's one of my favourite geek memories. I thought I would share it with you here. So, I'll leave you now. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video in the series, please do subscribe to my channel. Vote this video thumbs up on YouTube. Leave me a comment below. Do you have any similar drunk stories? Probably not. But I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, this was Geek Walker. Good night.